B2B Cambodia, the portal for business news in Cambodia. Hello and welcome to an episode of B2B Cambodia's industry update. I'm Darshana Gauchen. This episode focuses on the education sector and I'm joined here today by Mr. Casey Barnett, the president of CAMED Business School, who will help us to paint a picture of the current state of the education sector in Cambodia, as well as what new developments are on the horizon. Hi, thank you so much for spending your time to speak with us today about Cambodia's education sector. It's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. So CAMED Business School was first established back in the year 2000, I believe, and you've been here uh, from even before then. So it's been over two decades now, and you are quite a leading and well-established figure in the education industry, I would say. So having you know, understood the Cambodian education sector and having seen its development, what would you say are some of the main developments that you've witnessed over the past two decades? I think the, what impresses me the most that I, that I see is really the uh, power of private education, private schools, private universities. And because of the uh, openness of the Cambodian government to allow and encourage investment in private educational institutions and private schools, there now we see private schools uh, in every small town, in every small city. This has really given uh, parents a, a choice, uh, not to be limited only to the, uh, the government-run uh, school in their town or their neighborhood. They also have uh, easy, affordable access to uh, private education. And the private education can often be of better quality. And the private education can uh, also be more specialized. So, uh, for example, uh, English, uh, educa English language education. So it's possible for students now, uh, increasingly since uh, the year 2000, to uh, study Cambodian uh, at the Cambodian school uh, in the morning and study uh, English uh, and other subjects uh, in the afternoon. Uh, the young students, uh, Cambodian students who have graduated from high school, who come to me in uh, higher education, they are speaking fluent English, they're so smart and talented, and uh, this is really a result of uh, growth in private education. So since the government has been quite open to uh, allowing private education institutions to open around the country, are there any other policies and regulations that the government have introduced that have impacted the education sector similarly? Uh, one thing that I think has impacted the education uh, sector the most is uh, the government increased the salary of teachers. <laughs> so uh, paying teachers uh, more, uh, better, higher wages uh, really helps to uh, attract uh, higher quality uh, teachers to the, to the public education system. Uh, a second area where the government is uh, doing a great job is uh, in a quality assurance. So they've developed accreditation standards and accreditation process to review and monitor private schools as well as public schools. Could you expand a little bit on the main trends that you've observed in education and also maybe what those trends might be responding to in terms of like economic development, things like that? English now, uh, and increasingly, it's uh, almost become a necessity in Vietnam and Thailand, uh, it's not the case. So in Thailand, you can really speak uh, Thai in the workplace and you don't need English. And in Vietnam uh, as well. But in Cambodia, really, it's a, it's a necessity. I think it's because we're, uh, Cambodia is a small, open economy, a small country, open. Uh, so I think it's going to be uh, always the case that we really need to have uh, strong English skills here in Cambodia. Uh, there's also a trend now to study Chinese. Uh, I do uh, have a lot of uh, companies coming to uh, CAMED, to my school, asking for Chinese-speaking graduates, and they're willing to pay a premium for that. We see that uh, in the market there is a growing demand for accounting, tax, auditing, finance graduates, especially uh, auditing, tax, and accounting. But uh, in 2016, there is a new law on accounting and audit that was issued in 2016. And in the past, uh, just the past several years, 
Uh, the accounting and auditing regulator has been uh, enforcing compliance with accounting and auditing standards. And uh, this is something very new. Uh, although the accounting and auditing regulator existed since uh, the year 2002, they were taking an educational approach. Uh, and so now what we see them doing is they are actually enforcing uh, the law and companies that don't uh, adhere to the accounting and auditing regulations, they are charging uh, significant penalties. Uh, also, uh, since uh, 2013, uh, there's been a lot of reform in uh, the tax department and the tax department has been uh, uh, driving a higher level of compliance too. So these two things are really making uh, accounting, auditing, and tax uh, an important uh, skill and uh, drawing a lot of uh, our graduates. So we see a high demand in this area, and um, this is going to continue for the next several years. And I'm sure Kemet has been responding to that demand. Have you been introducing new programs or tweaking your programs that already exist? We have a process of continuous improvement. Uh, we followed a process called outcomes-based education. We are uh, ensuring that our curriculum is reflecting the needs of employers. So constantly uh, throughout the year, we are meeting with employers, we're surveying employers, formal and informal meetings to get their input to uh, revise our curriculum. Uh, we've introduced an advanced taxation course and uh, several years ago, we introduced uh, an I for S for SMEs course, for example. And one, one thing that we're doing uh, more and more is uh, the work our students do now is work in the, the real world. So we're not uh, requiring students to do long boring research papers uh, that might be uh, written by AI. We're having our students go out in the real world to prepare accounts and to prepare a financial report for real business uh, in Phnom Penh, in Cambodia. 